Hello, and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver, and I'm a scientist. There's a new paper doing the round using data from ambulance calls in Israel that some people are claiming shows that vaccines have caused an increase in cardiovascular events. The paper doesn't show this, or really anything at all. To be honest, the paper is so bad, I'm not quite sure where to start. But I think I'll just start by addressing a rather silly mistake that some people are making, and that is they're claiming that the paper was published in Nature. So let's go back to the science and have a look. So this is the paper. It's called Increased Emergency Cardiovascular Events Among Under 40 Population in Israel During Vaccine Rollout and Third COVID Wave. And as you can see, it's not published in Nature at all. It's published in a journal called Scientific Reports. Now, the reason people are making the mistake is because Scientific Reports is part of the Nature Publishing Group. But whereas Nature has an impact factor of close to 50 and is considered one of the most prestigious journals out there, the impact factor of Scientific Reports is under five, and it's just another journal. Now, there's nothing wrong with scientific reports as a journal, but it's not nature. Of course, the fact that it wasn't published in nature is no big deal. We should assess the paper on its merits. So let's have a look at what they did in the paper. They looked at the number of calls to emergency services in Israel and then compared them to COVID infections and vaccinations. So these are people calling for an ambulance. And in Israel, the number you call is apparently 101, but it's equivalent to triple zero in Australia, 999 in the UK, 911 in Northern America, and I assume various other numbers in other countries. In the study, they were specifically looking at calls for cardiac arrest or calls for what they call acute coronary syndrome. And they were looking for them in those 16 to 39 and those over 40. And they looked at the data for 2019, 2020, and 2021 up to the end of May. Now, they didn't look at all calls, though. They only looked at calls where they actually had age information. What proportion of calls did they have age information for? No idea. They don't tell us. Did the proportion of calls where they had age information vary over time, over the time of the study? No idea. They didn't tell us. And already that's a major issue with the study because we don't know if any changes we are seeing are a change in the actual numbers of people making the calls or just a change in the number of people who they were able to get age information out of. The other problem is they only have one normal year, which was 2019. So we have no idea what variation you would generally see from year to year. As you can imagine, there are a lot of causes of cardiac arrest and acute coronary syndrome, and they tend to vary with such things as weather, air pollution, and general stress, as well as just natural variation. So if you want to compare data from different time periods, you need to first look at what type of change you're going to see year on year anyway. As it happens, although they haven't bothered to do this in the study, the Israel Ministry of Health has looked at it, as they have most of the other claims that are made in the paper, and is analysed in this report. Alas, it's in Hebrew, which I can't read, but I've got the gist of it by using Google Translate. So this figure shows calls for suspected acute coronary syndrome and cardiac arrest for the years 2016 through to 2021 for both the 16 to 39 age group and the 40 plus age group. And what is really clear is that the numbers bounce around all over the place. Some years they go up and some years they go down. So simply comparing numbers for just over two years is completely pointless. And speaking of completely pointless, this whole paper is actually completely pointless because we already have much better studies available elsewhere. We actually have hospital data where we know both the vaccine status and the infection status of the patients experiencing cardiovascular events. So 
why would you even want to look at data from ambulance calls where you have no information on patient comorbidities and you don't even have the vaccination status of the people making the calls? But anyway, let's dig in and have a look at what they're trying to claim in the paper. On this figure here, the red line represents cardiac arrest calls, the purple line is first vaccine doses, the blue line is second vaccine doses, and the grey line is COVID-19 cases. You can also see some dotted vertical lines, and they represent the three different periods of lockdown that they had in Israel. Now, there's a couple of important things to note about this graph. The first is that it doesn't show the actual weekly numbers. For the cardiac arrest calls, it shows the five-week moving average. And for the other data, it shows the three-week moving average. Why they use different moving averages when they're trying to look for a correlation between data, I don't really understand. If you're trying to look for a correlation, you should be looking at the actual numbers so you can see if there is any association or not. If you've already moved the numbers through averaging, you're not really going to show that. Anyway, the other sneaky thing they've done is with their cardiac arrest calls to make the changes seem bigger than they are, they've actually started the scale from four instead of zero. So what we're seeing is a variation between 4 and 10, not between 0 and 10. The other thing you will notice is that the number of cardiac arrest calls go up and down all over the place prior to the start of COVID. You can see down, up, down, up, down, up. This doesn't correlate with vaccines or infections because neither were happening at the time. However, Conveniently, there's an uptick in the number of cardiac arrest calls that does happen to correlate with the second vaccine dose. Now, how this is special, but none of the other upticks are special, is beyond me. But they seem to think that's a big deal. Now, particularly hard to explain for them are the peaks at the end that don't correspond to vaccine doses at all. So what did they do? They decided to just make something up. This figure they've made here is a blow up of the last section of the previous figure so you can see everything a little bit clearer. Now you can see that here they've added a green line. What does this green line correspond to? Something they made up. They believe it could potentially represent single vaccine doses for people who had recovered from COVID. They didn't get this data from anywhere. They just drew the line based on some unproven assumptions. An important thing to note is that the green line is on a completely different scale than the blue line and the purple line. So although the green line looks quite big on this graph, it's actually lower than the purple line below it. So what they're trying to claim is that this uptick here is a result of these supposed vaccine doses the people who had previously got COVID had. Only problem is the peak in the doses is actually corresponding to a trough in cardiac arrest calls. So even if their made-up numbers are correct, it doesn't explain the extra peak in cardiac arrest calls. So what is the reason for the uptick in cardiac arrest calls? Well, possibly there is no reason. It could just be random noise. But something that they don't even consider is we know that after COVID, you have an increased risk of cardiovascular events that last at least 12 months. And clearly this uptick in cardiac arrest calls occurred after several waves of COVID. In this study, which is published in Nature Medicine, they look at cardiovascular complications over a period of 12 months following COVID for 153,760 individuals. And they compare the risk with two sets of control cohorts, a historical cohort from before the pandemic and a contemporary cohort of people with no evidence of SARS-CoV-2. They looked at a number of different cardiovascular complications and in every case, the risk was increased following COVID. And you can see a summary of the results here. The chart on the left, is the hazard ratio and anything to the right of the dotted line means an increased risk. 
The chart on the right shows the excess burden per 1,000 people. They also looked at the increased risk by age and they found it didn't matter whether you were under 65 or over 65, your risk was increased. Similarly, the risk was increased for both males and females. One more important point to make is that the authors of the emergency service call study imply that the majority of cardiac arrest calls are related to cardiac problems. And they provide a reference for this, but that is looking at cardiac arrest across all age groups. In the under 40s, there is no reason to think that a cardiac arrest would be most likely directly caused by a heart issue. And as it happens, the Israeli Ministry of Health have also looked at this. This table summarises what they found. They specifically looked at cardiac arrests that led to death in people aged 16 to 39. And that was most of them. They found 179 had died, but only 40 of them could actually be found in the death system because there is a delay in encoding of cause of death. But amongst people where they had records, 11 were suicide, 11 had chronic diseases, six had terminal cancer, three were either murdered or died of some sort of accident, and two had a drug overdose. Two actually did have cardiac disease and they were vaccinated over 80 days before their death and two deaths were from unknown causes. I think the word resilience there, which came from Google Translate, probably means that there was one person who was vaccinated 12 days before death. So basically what this is showing is there is no relationship between the cardiac arrest calls and vaccination. The authors also looked at ambulance calls for what they define as acute coronary syndrome. And this includes myocardial infarction, also known as heart attack, and myocarditis. So we'll just have a quick look at the results they presented there. So these are the results, and they have similar issues to the other chart we discussed. The scale starts at 20 instead of zero. So what are minor increases are made to look much larger, Also, as you can see, the peaks and troughs are all over the place again. It goes up and down in the year prior to COVID and prior to vaccination. But what is really curious on this chart is the highest peak in ACS calls actually occur in the middle of the first dose as opposed to during the second dose. Now, if there is one thing we do know, it is that myocarditis, although rare, does occur primarily in young males after the second dose. This has been shown in hundreds of studies with much better data than this one. So the fact that the association with acute coronary syndrome calls actually shows they're more likely to appear during the first dose is just another example of why this data is showing a spurious correlation and nothing more. Another important point to make is that the acute coronary syndrome calls weren't necessarily acute coronary syndrome. They were based on the assessment of the paramedics attending the calls. And it's just not always possible to correctly diagnose acute coronary syndrome outside of a hospital. This was also analysed by the Israeli Ministry of Health. And this figure here shows what they found. Firstly, they looked at the vaccination status of the people who were the subject of the calls. And it turns out that only 43% of them were even vaccinated. 27% were vaccinated but had been vaccinated for over a month. So only 30% of the calls were for people who had been vaccinated for less than a month. When you look at these calls, you can see that 18% of them were never actually taken to hospital. Another 18% were taken to hospital, but they didn't record a cardiac diagnosis in the emergency room. And for 52% of them, the only diagnosis recorded was chest pain. In fact, only 6% were hospitalised with a diagnosis of some kind of cardiac issue if they'd actually been vaccinated in the month before. Another huge limitation of this paper, which they do discuss, is the fact that only 50% of people with acute coronary syndrome actually call an ambulance. 
The rest just turn up at the emergency department. So even if there was a relevant association in this data, it's meaningless because they don't include the people who go directly to hospital by themselves. You need to look at the total numbers, not just the subset. As I mentioned previously, there are in fact numerous studies that have looked at adverse events that occur after vaccination by analysing hospital records. And there's even one that was actually done in Israel. And here it is. And it does, of course, find an increase in myocarditis and pericarditis after vaccination. And we know that. What it doesn't find is an increase in any other cardiovascular events after vaccination. And it also shows an increase in both myocardial infarction and arrhythmia, as well as myocarditis and pericarditis after COVID infection. Another thing they like to make a big deal out of in the emergency course paper is the fact that there doesn't appear to be any correlation between infection with SARS-CoV-2 and ambulance calls for cardiovascular issues. However, this isn't remotely surprising because The reason they call the virus SARS-CoV-2 is because it can cause severe acute respiratory syndrome, and that is the reason that you are most likely to be hospitalised with it. Once you get to hospital, it is possible to then develop cardiac symptoms or, sadly, cardiac arrest, as we saw in the previous paper, though that's not going to be the reason you actually call an ambulance in the first place. You call an ambulance way before you get to that stage. The authors of the paper also claim to have discovered a previously unknown association between young women aged 16 to 39 who have been vaccinated and acute coronary syndrome. Indeed, they claim there is a 40% increase in acute coronary syndrome calls from January to May 2021 compared with January to May 2020. What they gloss over, though, is there was also a 35.7% increase over January to May 2020 compared with the same period of the previous year. You can't pick and choose what changes you want to focus on. And it also beggars belief that they could have managed to find something that has been missed in the hundreds of other papers that were much better designed than this and where they actually knew who had been vaccinated and who hadn't been vaccinated. So in summary... This paper is total rubbish. They've completely ignored increases and decreases that don't fit their story and have cherry-picked associations. As we all know, correlation doesn't mean causation. However, in this case, even the correlation is dubious. If you'd like to look further into the data I've presented, I've provided links in the video's description. And please remember this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. Thank you for listening. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button so that more people will see it. And if you'd like to see more videos in the future, please hit the subscribe button.